Hello everyone, welcome to The Last Door Chapter 2, Memories. Well, I just played through Chapter 1, so I guess there's not much to say about this, let's just get right into it. Hmm. Huh. It's requesting permission to store information on your computer. Requires one megabyte of local storage. Sure, whatever, that's, that's fine. That's new. I wonder why it has that now, but it didn't for the last chapter. Hmm. Gotta love Flash. Anyway, let's go. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. <laughs> Are we gonna have a start similar to the first one? Where something dramatic happens and then we switch to a different perspective? That is a whole hell of a lot of crosses. The kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us each our daily bread. What am I doing? Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive our debtors. Ah, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Amen. <laughs> I really like the introductions to these, the first two chapters. It's a very interesting way to introduce each game, with this really small but dramatic little scene that is connected to what you do in the rest of the game. Now tell me, where are you? What do you see? Whoa, what is this? Who is it? Is it him, Anthony? Answer me. Is this a nightmare? What is she doing? Get close to her. Get close to Anna. When I count to three, you'll wake up. One. Two. Three. Now, wake up. Wake up! You can rest now, Mr. Devitt. That will be enough for today. Are these sessions really necessary? I'm confident that this is the best course of treatment for your symptoms. Now, did you ever see him again? I saw it. What did you see? Can you describe it? Oh, whoa, this is new. I actually get to choose my dialogue options. 
That wasn't in the first game because there were no conversations in the first game. Interesting. It looked like an eye. It was like an eye, perfectly rounded and dark, deep and empty, accompanied by the most horrifying, pain-filled screams I've ever heard. Inside, a complete darkness where an evil dwells deep below. A forgotten fear for human reasoning. But undoubtedly... Wait, what? But undoubtedly still rests deep down inside our being. In my case, that fear has already woken. I can understand why you are, you are disturbed, Mr. Devitt. With your permission, I would like to consult on your case with a colleague of mine. A man I've known for many years who is more versed in modern psych psychological practices. I think his knowledge and experience would be very helpful in enabling us to understand your condition. If you think it would help, Doctor, I leave it in your hands. The agony, the agony grows increasingly unbearable. And if you believe this man can help, then I welcome his aid. Thank you, Dr. Wakefield. I bid you good evening. Anthony, my friend, what really happened to you? How could you have let your wife Anna die so awfully? These doubts consume my soul. I hardly remember the time we spent together as schoolmates. I confess that, beyond your enduring friendship, I can recall little of those years. Were your words a result of an increasing loss of sanity? In your letter, you wrote that someone awaits me. A warning to ward me from a genuine danger? Or merely the ravings of a brilliant mind addled by insanity? Something stirs uneasily within my heart. I will not rest easily again until... Until I go back to that boarding school and find out what secrets may lie within. Farewell, Mr. and Mrs. Beechworth. Rest now in peace. Chapter 2. Memories Here we go, to the boarding school, where... Where what? What exactly happened? They made some sort of a pact here, right? Him and... And Mr. Beechworth and the rest of the group, whatever the group was. An old, quite damaged mailbox. Anything in it? There is a postcard inside the mailbox. Dear Matthew, it has been several months and still I have heard no news from you. My brothers insist that you have abandoned me, but I am sure you remain true. I know that you would never do that to me, for I know your heart and the honesty of your eyes. I got this address from a hospital in London and pray that it reaches you safely. If that's the case... I want you to know that I will be always waiting for you. Forever, forever yours, Juliet Holloway. Hmm. Well, the weather seems lovely. Sounds like I'm walking through mud. Rainy and dreary and wet. The Angel Gabriel, the school's emblem. I remember it being very pristine, but it looks neglected and dirty now. A stone eagle. A stone eagle lies on the floor. It appears to have broken off of the fountain. Yeah, this place is just in disrepair. I'm assuming it hasn't been active for a long time.
Never mind. Apparently it's still occupied. Strange though. Hold on. What's around the back? It's weird that it'd be in such a state of disrepair. <laughs> what kind of a crazy person goes around the back of a building before even going in the front door? I don't know, but I'm doing it. Hey, what are you digging there? An ancient blackthorn tree, twisted by time and weather. A locked wood coffin, badly finished. It seems that whoever made it was a bit rushed to finish. Good evening. I hope you're right, and this indeed be a good evening. My name is Devitt. I didn't know there was a cemetery here. My pleasure, Mr. Devitt. I'm Frank Baldwin. Don't ask me why, but... Oh god, how do I pronounce that? Monsonor? I'm gonna go with Monsonor. I don't know if that's correct. Monsonor specifically ordered to bury the corpses here. M why? I don't understand. Did he order to bury corpses here? Why? I don't understand. What is there to understand, Mr. Devitt? God has forsaken this place. Ah, don't you know? Here we take care of patients. I'm an old alumnus. I used to attend this school. It has been a long time since this is not a boarding school anymore. The building is now used as a nursing home run by nuns. A former student, huh? I never heard anybody in the village speak fondly of the school. They say it closed overnight, though nobody knows why. Not a lot was known about it. Excuse the interruption, Mr. Baldwin. I'll leave you with your work. Have a nice evening, alumnus Devitt. Closed almost overnight. Why? Why would it be suddenly so suddenly closed? This small group of graves has been haphazardly arranged. The door is locked from the inside. Okay, let's be a normal person and go in through the front door. Pardon. Excuse me, sister. Good evening, sister. Good evening. I'm Mother Elizabeth. What brings you here, Mr... Devitt. I'm a, for I'm a former student of this boarding school. As you can see, Mr. Devitt, this stopped being an academic institution a long time ago and is now exclusively dedicated to prayer and the well-being of the patients under our care. I see. Even so, may I please speak to... Mr. Devitt, I'm afraid that we are too busy to start wasting time talking about past issues. In addition, there is little to say. We sisters arrived after the boarding school had closed down. Everybody but... <laughs> There's that name again, which I'm probably mispronouncing. Everybody but... Monsonor? Is that how he pronounced it? Everybody but Monsonor, of course. Monsonor? Exactly. But you didn't answer my question. Why have you come to this place, Mr. Devon? Hmm. What should I go with? I prefer not to talk about it. Play the mysterious card? Hmm. This place will help me remember. My past. If you have memory problems, I would recommend you to visit a doctor immediately and don't waste your time here. <laughs> don't be such a smart ass, Jesus. I prefer. Okay, fine. I prefer not to talk about it. To be honest. I just don't want to talk about it. I couldn't tell you why this place is so important for me, but it is. A lot. Well, I appreciate your honesty, Mr. Devitt. I'll allow you to stay around here. I hope I won't regret my decision. Don't worry, Mother. Thank you.
Right. We'll have a postcard, some stone, and that's it. Can you tell me anything about this postcard? I'm not sure if this person is the recipient of this letter. Hmm. A huge wooden crucifix. Wait, a huge wooden crucifix watched the door? Watches the door? I think that's meant to be plural. Mr. Divot. You are not allowed to get in there. My coat. Where are you? Juliet. Where are you? Let me, uh, let me read this again. Who's this addressed to? Or who's it from? Ju yeah, Juliet. Juliet Holloway. Hmm. Oops, didn't mean to examine it again. I'm not sure if this person is the recipient of this letter. Well, no, it's not the recipient, but... All right, let's just talk to him. Doctor. I'm sorry, I'm not a doctor. Pay him no mind. He has been delirious for some days. I'm Miss Mary Vinge, and this is my brother, Matthew. Juliet. Why have you left me? Why don't you answer my letters? My letters. You see? The poor man is still obsessed with his wife. He won't accept that she left him months ago. My poor Matthew. I'm very sorry, Miss Finge. I hope he recovers. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vinge, I think this letter is addressed to you. Oh, thank you. Leave it to me if you'd be so kind. As you can see, my brother is too weak to read it. Well, Matthew, let's see who has written to you. Oh, it's a letter from our mother. Dear Matthew, I hope you are recovering. I wish that... Your beloved sister and you come back home soon. Mother needs now more... Oh, it disappeared. What was that? You know how alone Mother feels since you left? I feel like I'm missing something. It feels like there's something I should know based on what just happened, but for some reason it's not clicking in my mind. Hmm. Among the baggages, I can see a packet of letters bound by twine. Did I just steal her... Oh, was giving her that postcard just a distraction to get her to look away from her bag? <laughs> Maybe it was. Alright, what did these say? Among the baggage, I can see it. Yep. Can I, can I like, read them? Apparently not. Huh. What do I do with them? Some bandages and other medical equipment. Nothing of interest. A picture of St. Camillus de Lely. Patron saint of the sick, hospitals, and nurses. He seems to have forsaken this place. <laughs> Patrons, patron saint of the sick. Photographs of people, most likely family and friends of this bed's previous resident. A magazine entitled Weird Tales. I'd like to read that. Although, what's the point in reading about a weird tale? Because I'm just about to experience one, I think. Hello. What happened to you? Are you alright? There was a rhythmic sound, like a breathing. But, when? Last night, I felt an increasing... an increasing pressure on my temples. Something dry and rough, like tree bark, 
brushed against my leg, and I saw something on the wall, like a growing shadow. I lit the lamp, and there was nothing. Madam? Okay, so it seems like this place is infested with evil. Just like the house was. The mansion. He is quite a pale young boy. He is asleep. Please help. Are you talking to me or to her? Please, someone. Piety? Is that how that's pronounced? I am sorry, you cannot be here. Is there some way I can help? Don't worry about it, sir. The Lord looks after each and every one of our patients. He will provide you with all the help you need. If you wish, you can pray there, next to the statue of Our Lady. Don't you think she is beautiful? The Virgin listens to those in need. Hmm. A gloomy statue of the Virgin Mary makes this place even more mournful if that is possible. A picture of the Virgin Mary gazing at you, supposedly to portray a sympathy and compassion for you. However, she seems to look more pained and sorrowful here. This looks like some sort of a library or a... What is this actually? What are these? Benches? I remember that we used to keep here some textbooks. Now there is a music box. Hmm. Dear brother, I have received your letter and I'll try to write you more frequently. I hope you are studying a lot and you feel comfortable there. We miss you a lot. When are you coming back? Father is in bed with fever and I do not feel very well, but I'm on medication. Today is my birthday and I am feeling blue. It's a quiet and boring Sunday at the village. Mum is going to cook a lemon cake. As those then... Wait, what? As those then grandma used to make? What? I wish we could eat it together. Write back soon. I'm looking forward to knowing how you're doing, what you're learning, how is Scotland, and so on. A big hug. I think about you a lot. Your dear sister. I'm still trying to make sense. I'm still trying to make sense of that sentence. Mum is going to cook a lemon cake as those than grandma used to make. What? As those than grandma used to make. I know what it's trying to say, I just don't get how it said it. Strange. January 15th, 1876. A Father Ernest seems unusually troubled today. Several times he paused abruptly in the middle of a lecture for no reason, even during his favorite class, theology. January 18th, 1876. Today, Father Ernest was very irritable. Collins made a comment and was expelled from class for it, and even Devitt was admonished just for reading a philosophy book. I hope Father Ernest doesn't turn his ire towards me. My father will be disappointed if I fail to get good marks. January 21st, 1876. It was very disconcerting to see Father Ernest entering class so pale and sweaty. In the middle of his lecture, he stumbled, dazed, and had to sit. January 22nd. Father Eugene taught our theology class today, even though he doesn't know the subject matter as well as Father Ernest. When we asked him what had happened to Father Ernest, Father Eugene told us that he had taken ill. What worries me is that now Father Eugene is also starting to look unwell. February 20th, 1876. It's been a month since we last saw Father Ernest. We're told that he's still sick, but if he's so ill, then why hasn't a physician come to treat him? My studies are flagging, but I have taken it upon myself to read on my own. I hope this helps as I must succeed in spite of the problems happening around us. February 23rd. 
It was announced this morning that the school is to close. None of us know why, and we can't get a straight answer from the faculty. They each dodged the question, and I am starting to think they may not know the answer themselves. Their anxiety is palpable, though they try to hide it behind a calm face. But what about Father Ernest? I hear he alone is to remain after we vacate the premises. There's a picture in the diary. It's the photograph of my graduating class. Wait, why is there a mark across the photo that covers up one person's face? That's suspicious. I see myself, Father Ernest, and Anthony. I don't remember the names of the others. One face has been completely scratched out. That is highly suspicious. There's nothing creepier than a scratched out face in a photo. That, that's damn creepy. All right, so it sounds like the faculty here were becoming sick. They were becoming increasingly pale and prone to dizziness and stumbling. And I remember the, the diaries and stuff that I read from Beechworth's, Beechworth's, wait, Worth? Yeah, Beechworth's house, his mansion. And the paintings showed a lot of pale people. So whatever's been happening to these people, whatever's causing this stuff seems to somehow infect people and cause them to become pale and just sickly. The books on these shelves are old and musty. Theology is the dominant subject. There's an odd sentence written on the board. In death, there is hope. In death, there is life. One must seek its true nature to understand the nothing. It looks like it has been there for years, as the chalk has faded in some places. Strange. I unlocked the door. Oh, that must be the back entrance, right? Mm hmm. All right, well, I have a bunch of letters, a music box, and a stone. A music box, probably it belonged to one of the students. A dusty old tapestry of the Virgin Mary with baby Jesus in her arms. A worn out and faded tapestry of Jesus Christ. Whoa, what the hell? Another tapestry, though I remember from my school days the student dormitory was here. It's draped over the ground. Okay, so behind it is an entrance. And they're using it to cover it up. Can they just, like, take it down? Throw a stone at it! Yeah! The stone ornament. This stone ornament is not sharp enough to help me cut this. Okay, I didn't think so. Whoa. The showers. The old rusty pipe communicates with other areas in the house. Does it? Maybe I could use the music box, but to do what? What would I accomplish? There is a puddle in the shower hole with something shining under the grating. I can't see it properly. Hmm. Lens. Doesn't work. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with this stone. I'm just going to keep using it on everything. 
until it... I'll find a use for it, somewhere. The tap of the shower. Or tab. If I open the tab, the shiny object could be carried away by the stream of water. True. Very true. The showers. Old, rusty, and poorly maintained. Just a couple of old towels. A broken mirror. There is a protruding piece. Is there? Well, I have my sharp piece. Let's go to the dormitories. Surely the nuns wouldn't mind if I just cut one of their tapestries, right? No. The mirror chunk is sharp, but too weak to cut the, ca the tapestry. It might break. Hmm. Can I, like, combine it with something? No. Not sure what I'm supposed to do with that. Alright, let's try the music box. Huh? Apparently you don't use it on the old rusty pipe. At least, not yet. The stone eagle has uh, had once belonged to the Angel, Angel Gabriel Fountain. Gabriel. Gabriel, Gabriel, whatever. It's all the same. I know I'm probably mispronouncing everything. I'm sorry. Right, so I have a piece of stone in the shape of a eagle. Have a packet of letters bound by twine. I guess I could cut the twine. Now, apparently I can't cut the twine. Hmm. And a music box and a piece of mirror that is very sharp. Not precisely sure what I'm supposed to do with this stuff. Why, hello there. An old mirror that hardly reflects. A syringe next to a flask with a label that says morphine. Oh, morphine. You know, that can't be very good procedure. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to keep morphine kind of locked up. It's a pretty serious drug. One of the humble beds where the nuns sleep. On the upper shelf of the antique cupboard, a well-worn Bible and rosary beads to gather dust. Through the big open window, dusk-cold wind freezes the room. Good evening, sister. Sister? All this suffering, all these tears, all our prayers, unanswered. What... what do you mean, sister? All these years, entrusted to the Lord, praying, looking for a... sign. For something that can give me strength. Every day I hear them cry, pray, scream, and die. And what for? Where are you, Lord? Why don't you answer me? Maybe there is no Lord. What should we do then? What is our living purpose? I can't go on. Not like this. Excuse me, sir. Well, she's lost all hope. And in a dreary place like this, that doesn't surprise me. Maybe I can cheer her up with the music box? No. Would you like some letters? No.
Something tells me I need that morphine, but I can't seem to take it. It doesn't even seem to give me an option. Please, I just want to be alone. Do you take care of the patients here? Of course, Mr. Devitt. We tend to both the physical and spiritual needs of those in our care. Did you say that Monsignor already lived here when this venue still was a boarding school? Indeed. He still was priest and professor before he became a Monsignor and started to lead this place. Okay, I, I still can't escape that horrible feeling that I'm just completely butchering his name. Monsignor. 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 How else could you pronounce it? Monsieur? I don't know. Could I speak with him? Could I talk to... I'm, I'm just gonna say him. <laughs> I'm just gonna say him. F forget his name. Could I talk to him? I'm afraid that's impossible. He has left strict instructions that he not be disturbed, not even by any of the sisters. Hmm. Who is Mr. Baldwin? He instructed me to take him on as a caretaker. Many of the sisters found him a bit strange, but he performs his work well and complains a little. Have there been many deaths lately? Mother Elizabeth, Mr. Baldwin told me that lately a lot of patients are dying. What is happening? Sadly, the Lord is taking many of those unfortunate souls. Hmm. Thanks, Mother. I'll leave you with your duties. It's rather suspicious that so many of their patients are dying. Very suspicious. What is happening? I mean, they seem to be dying so fast that even the caretaker has to crudely construct the coffins to put the bodies into. Like, he doesn't even have time to make proper coffins. Let's see if I can speak with him again. Miss Vinge is making up the letter's contents. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I didn't put together. My memory's terrible, so I couldn't remember exactly what it said, but I was pretty sure it wasn't their mother. She's just making it up. She wants him to... think. That he was abandoned. That she never tried to make contact, but she did. Why? The poor woman has fallen into an uneasy, fitful sleep. And let me guess, she, yep, she still wants help. Would you like a music box? No. I already told you that you cannot be here. But... Okay, okay. Use the music box on the statue! No. I don't think the statue needs the music box. <laughs> Neither do I. Who does need the music box? Let's go talk with the caretaker again. Who is the... Hey, I said I would call him him, right? So who is the him? <laughs> who is he, Mr. Baldwin? I can't rightly say. After all these years, I've never seen the man. Who knows? Maybe he doesn't exist. But Mother Elizabeth told me that he specifically requested your hiring by letter. 
I am flattered my reputation precedes me, but I still can't tell you anything more about the man. I'll leave you with your work. Oh, I can go over here. That is an awful lot of graves. Haphazardly arranged. Oh, down to the beach. What is that? A piece of old fishing net. I know precisely what I can do with that. Many years adrift have perfectly smoothed this flot flotsam into a small log. The Lost Pilgrim. A sea stack older students at the school used to climb. Somewhere up there are my initials. Let's just take in this view for a moment. On the beach at this place that he used to be at as a kid. Staring at this, the lost pilgrim, and his initials are... are on it. Ah, memories. I wonder though, does he have fond memories of this place, or not? Given what I've... given what I've been hearing about the history of this place, I find it hard to believe that this could have been a fun place, or a good place. It sounds miserable. Both before and now. Alright, well let's use the fishing net on the thing in the showers. And see what the hell it is. Wait, is this the right way? No. Here we go. Wait, seriously? What? Hmm. There is a puddle in the shower hole with something shining under the grating. I can't see it properly. Something shining under the grating. What do I need to do? I have so much stuff, but I'm not sure what to do with it. I mean, when I try to turn this... He says if I open the tab, the shiny object would be carried away by the stream of water, so I'm guessing I need to keep it here. Which you could use a net to do, but I can't use it. Because I, I guess probably because it's under the grating. Whatever the grating is, I mean, I can't even see any sort of a grating, but... Hmm. What do I do with this net? I can't combine it with the log. I mean, I... Can I do anything with, it, with this stuff I have in my inventory? No. So... What do I do with it? The mirror is too thick to pin it to the wood, and it also seems fragile. I could break it if I force it. If only I had a pocket knife. <laughs> if only I had a pocket knife, this would be so much easier. If only I had a multi-tool, then I could do practically everything. I need something sharp to get to the dormitory. How would I do that? 
I have something sharp, but it's too weak. Shard of a broken mirror. Okay, what can I do with an extremely smooth log? I, I don't know. I'm kind of lost here. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm gonna cut here and I will be back when I find what... find out what the heck I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, here we go. Here's what you're supposed to do. Okay, I used the bundle of letters that I got from his sister here and gave them directly to Matthew. It's all the letters that she's been holding on to and keeping from him. Okay. My letters. All the letters I wrote to dear Juliet. You never posted them. But why, Mary? Why would you do such a thing? How could you be so cruel? I had to do it, Matthew. You refuse to see how inappropriate a match she is for you. Her only interest is marrying someone of your status. Of our family's status. It was for your sake I did this. I did it to protect you from that woman's treachery. No. You only thought about yourself. Of your vanity. I can't bear to look upon you anymore, Mary. Leave me be. From this day forth, you are no sister of mine. You dare banish me? I, who have stayed by your side all through your illness? Very well, Matthew. You will have your way. I will leave you, and then you will see how very alone you are. Farewell, brother. Thanks be to the Lord that you have come to reveal my sister's cruelty, sir. Please, take this coin as a token of my appreciation. It is my lucky coin, though I hope it serves you better than it has myself. Alright, now I have a lucky coin. What do I do with that, though? And by the way, that took me about 20... It took me more than 20 minutes to find that solution. I mean, I didn't know who the bundle of letters were to. It, it didn't tell me. It just said there were a bundle of letters bound by twine. I mean, why would I need the bundle of letters to reveal to him that his sister's lying? I, I already had a letter. In the mailbox. From the mailbox. That proved that she was lying. I already knew that she was lying. I could have said, Hey, Matthew, why don't you look at what she's reading and see that she's not actually reading it? I'm not sure why I had to give her that. That, that, was, that was weird. Anyway. Lucky coin. What do I do with that? Whoops. Hope it brings me better luck than to Mr. Vinge. Indeed. Okay, what can I do with a lucky coin? Well, forget the lucky part. What can I do with a coin? Oh wait, I can probably use this to wind up the music box? Yes. Okay. Whoops, wrong way. The fact that I can actually use it to wind up the music box is actually another very strange thing. Because the only reason I know you can do that is because... Well, look in the description for it. A music box probably belonged to one of the students. That's all it says. It doesn't say it's missing the part that you need to wind it up. I mean, I didn't even know you really needed to wind up music boxes with some sort of a special thing. I've never had a music box. I, I thought they just had like a little thing that you just spin on the outside. I didn't know they needed a key, or maybe this one is different and maybe this one needs a sort of key, but others don't. Anyway, the point is, I didn't even know I needed to wind it up. The only reason I was able to figure that out is because when I made an, an absolutely asinine combination, when I was trying out a bunch of stuff to try to solve this, 
When you try to combine the log with it, it says, the wooden stick is too thick to use for the winding for winding the music box. I would need something thinner. If it wasn't for that description, with this absurd combination of the log and the music box, I wouldn't have figured that out. Very strange. Okay, so do I wind it up and then use it on this? To spread the music throughout the whole building, I guess? No, what do I do with that? Use it to give hope to the nun who's lost hope? Here you go. See? Life is alright. Oh, what a beautiful melody. It reminds me of my youth, when I was vibrant and full of purpose. I knew my path then. Oh, may God bless you, for you have given me the sign I was looking for. That was a sign? That was just me trying to progress in the game, but okay. If you want to take that as a sign, I will gladly accept it. Now, can I get my hands on this morphine? No. Oh. I can look out the window. A lot of dry leaves have accumulated in a hole of this old rusty pipe. They're blocking the water stream. Let's move that out. The hole has very sharp and rusty edges. If I try to put my hand in, I could cut myself. Does it? Can I sharpen my log? The wood is too softened to even bend the sharp edges of the pipe. What about this? I blunted the sharp edges of the pipe. Now I need not fear being cut. There is nothing now to impede the water stream. Okay, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what I just accomplished though. What does that do? The water stream is unimpeded, but what it... Where's the water going? I uh, used the net on it? Wait, what? The net should catch anything coming down the pipe. Wait, this is the pipe for the... Th okay, I didn't even know that. Apparently that's where the water for the shower thing goes. So I can probably turn this now, right? Mm-hmm. And go find it in the net. The net has caught the shiny object. Teardrop. It's a glass tear, probably once belonged to a piece of jewelry. Okay. So what do I do with it? What do I do with a teardrop that once belonged to a piece of jewelry? Is it sharp? Can I use it to cut this? The tear doesn't work to cut the tapestry. Well, the people here do seem to respond to signs, so maybe I could do this? <laughs> I've placed a glass tear in a hollow with a virgin's cheek. It seems that it fits perfectly. <laughs> what is this going to do? But, let's see. Okay, I, I did that, but now what? Play music.
In the eyes of a fervent devotee, it could look like a real tear. That's what I was thinking. But apparently I can't make her look turn around. So... Who do I get? The nun at the front desk? No. Apparently not. So, who... How... Who... What... When, where, why? No. You're asleep, right? Yep, and you're asleep too. Oh, I noticed one creepy detail, by the way. If you look at these crosses over her bed, there are several crucifixes all together at the headboard of this bed. Why? I was thinking. The letters we had read said that people were... Like the teachers were becoming pale and sickly over time. Like they were being infected or drained by something. And also we know a bunch of people are dying here. It looks like they're concentrating crucifixes over her bed as if they're trying to keep away the evil from infecting her. Very creepy. Okay, maybe now I need to use the music box in the shower thing? I think maybe I do, because she specifically says something that seems like a hint. Let's see. The Virgin listens to those in need. I think that's a hint. Right? It is it is it not a hint? Communicates with other areas in the house. Okay. I'm confused. I thought that would work. I already tried playing it behind the statue. Can you use anything that I have on it? Wait, the, the... Oh. See... Really? I need to ref reflect light at it to make her see it? But when she turned around to talk to me, that didn't work? What have I done? What have we done? I don't know. What have you done? But seriously, she literally was turning around to talk to me right here. I was standing, like, right here, and she was turning around. I couldn't just say, hey, why don't you look up there? Why don't you look one feet over there? And I could point my hand directly at it. But I have to stand away and reflect light onto it to make her see it? That is so silly and contrived. But it's done. Now I can finally talk to her. You, you must help me. What can I do? What's wrong with you? There's little time. I tell them about my pain. I describe the unbearable and endless pain, yet they do not listen. They pass me by, 
without even looking at me. They say that they're praying for me, but it does not cure my ailment. But sir, I... I know, but I beseech you. You will be saving me from horrible torture. I will be eternally indebted to you. Um... Uh, oh, sh if you want, I'll do it. I understand. Your request is terribly hard for me, but I guess I could find the courage to help you. Well, that sounds really weak, doesn't it? I, I guess I can find the courage to help you. Maybe. I understand the magnitude of what I'm asking. God bless you, sir. I don't know how I can show my gratitude. What I need you to do is, without the nuns noticing, to try to get an amount of morphine enough so... so that I can be embraced by the deepest of dreams, and in that way, stop the rhythm of my heart. Well, I know exactly how to do that. Was it here? No, over here. Went too far. Yes, just just keep praying there. I'm gonna take some morphine. Yunk. Um, where did he go? There is a note on the bed. Baldwin lies, Baldwin lies, etc., etc. What the hell? Is there another one, or is that just one? I think it's just one. Let's go see Baldwin, shall we? Did Baldwin just take him alive and bury him? Or put him inside of the coffin? Or... A grave recently dug. What the fuck? The log is too soft even to use as a lever and open the coffin. I can't open the coffin with my own hands. The lid is nailed. Shit. Well, the coin isn't gonna work. The coin is too thick to lever the nails out of the coffin. What the hell can I use? And where did Baldwin go? I'm sorry, I'll be right back. Don't suffocate. I hope the thing isn't airtight. What is that? a blob of pixels. Nun's habit and walking stick. These no doubt belong to the nun I spoke to by the window. But where did she go? Um. Did she go out to the lost pilgrim? Did she go on a pilgrimage? Alright, there was a damn shovel out here, obviously being used to dig this, but where is it? It's gone. Oh. Um, excuse me. I'll let you get back to your work. Mr. Baldwin, I'll leave you with your work. 
Mm hmm. Baldwin lies. What if I give him the morphine? No. <laughs> it looks like his toolbox. I wonder if there's something useful in it. I might be able to take a look if I keep him distracted. How would I distract him? Please don't touch my things. Fair enough. How could I distract him? Music? It didn't work. I could go up to the window and potentially do so. I could knock him out. No, apparently I can't. Excuse me, do you have anything to say? Nope. Let's check upstairs. Let's look out the window. I was thinking maybe I could sabotage something up here to distract him, but I don't know if that would make any damn sense, and it doesn't seem I can. She's praying fervently. Right. Distraction. I still don't have anything sharp to get into the dormitory. What if I give her the morphine? No. Shit, I just totally hit the microphone. Holy crap, sorry. Whoops. Let me put you back into place, microphone. That. Okay, there we go. <laughs> wow, I just hit it with my elbow. That was probably really loud. Anyway, I was gonna say, I have no idea how to distract him. I use? Throw the music box in the grave? <laughs> I don't know. Nope. I don't think he had anything new to say. Oh, whoa, what the hell? He didn't have anything new to say before, but now he does. Uh, oh, why, why did it show up now, but not before? Tell me about him. Oh, wait, he's, yeah, he's already talked about this. Yeah, he hasn't seen him. Tell me about Mother Elizabeth. She's pretty strict. I can tell you that much, Mr. Devitt. Don't think she very much likes me, either. Tell me about this place. Well, the construction of this building was ordered by an... What the hell is that? Episcopal? Bishop of Aberdeen in 1805? Tell me about Aberdeen. It was the place where I was born and raised. One of the biggest cities in Scotland. 
If you look there towards the... Wait, you'll see King's Chapel Tower. This is the highest point of the city. Oh, you seem a bit distracted, Mr. Devitt. Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, okay, I'm not exactly sure what he said because it went by so fast, but something about North... North whatever... Scotland Tower thing? I'm not sure how that's supposed to help me. Do it again? Ah, oh, there we go. Gotcha. Okay. Nail tool. Time to get him out of the coffin. Come on out of there. The darkness of his eye. His body is petrified. He has a look of sheer terror in his eyes. What the fuck? Oh my god. But what has happened? Talk. Talk to me. Mother Elizabeth is trying to make him come to his senses. I don't know what's happened. That's a good question. Shall we go have a chat? I think it's time to go have a chat. With one Mr. Person whose name I can't quite pronounce. Monsignor? What do you have on your desk? These are the papers on which Mother Elizabeth was working. William Neelands, November 13th, 1891. Cause of death? Caclexia? I don't know what that is. Scratch marks have been found on in his in his stomach. What? Elmer Moore, November 17th, 1891. Plur cause of death? Pleurisia. A clear expression of terror on the patient's paralyzed face was found at the time of death. Evelyn Benzi, November 20th, 1891. Cause of death. Marasmo. We found the patient dead, emaciated, and paleness in the body. Oh my god, it just goes on. Typhoid fever. Severe hallucinations minutes before death. Screamed and shook until the opiates started to take effect. Tuberculosis. Cause of death unknown. He died while he was sleeping. Respiratory arrest. Morphine overdose. Patient committed suicide. Poisoning. And this is all within... November, 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 December. That's all within two months. All those deaths. Something is seriously wrong here. A bright, a large, bright, and ornate key. <laughs> Once again, return of the golden key. Hello? Back in time. This must be me when I was young. Devitt. Don't look into his eyes. What? What are you talking about? Whose eyes? Because the deepest darkness... ...dwells in his eyes. Come in, my son. Did you think you could hide these books from me? They're... they're just classic literature books, father. Socrates and Aristotle. Silence! Instruments of falsehood, you'll mean. Fallacies coming from the snake. Now, son, get on your knees and raise your arms. Apologize to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. It's Latin. Means evil in itself. A strange eye-shaped symbol. 
the hell was that? Was that... Did the window just crack, or was that a bird hitting the window? A crow. Eye of the bird. What does this mean? I see blood. I think that's birds hitting the window. A set of crucifixes next to the door. Lord, your eyes burn me. I don't deserve mercy, nor forgiveness. O Lord, have mercy on my soul. Who are you sending me? Is death to whom you are handing me over? Has my hourglass already run out of sand? Father Ernest. Ernest? It's been many years since I last heard that name. Since... Oh. I see. Father, I'm here to be able to remember. You have to help me, I beg you. Pleas, entreaties, petitions, praying, torment, exemption. Past times bring us just misfortune and pain. Father Ernest, I... I was one of your students. One of my old students, you say. It's only the Lord who teaches us. We all must follow his ordinances and disciplines. Get closer, son. Come pray next to me. What is that note on the ground? A creepy image of Christ, crucified. Inexplicably, it has a dark cloth covering his head. Weird. The makeshift altar is coated in a dense in a dense layer of wax. The candles, having almost burnt out, only barely illuminate the room. The walls are completely covered with crosses. A mentally ill act. He has a large burn covering his eyes. He's completely blind. A large burn covering his eyes. So he burned out his eyes? So, so that, well, let me guess, so that he wouldn't have to look into the eyes, right? And see whatever terrible things you see in the eyes or the eye of whatever the hell I've been seeing. Despite his decrepitude, extreme thinness, and paleness, I can still recognize Father Ernest. But he seems far away, like in another world. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Now, my son, tell the Lord which one is his voice, the sharp sword, the wise quill, or the delicate petal. Um, I don't know. The wise quill seems middle of the road. No, no, no! You're enveloped by sin. And now, my son, tell the Lord which one is his holy path. The wise virtue, the endless blame, or the blessed penance. Uh, the endless blame? Yes, yes, that's it, my son. Nostra culpa infinata est, and it always was and will. And now, my son, tell the Lord who are you, the faceless pilgrim, the gate guard, or the lost seaman? Um. I, I, I have no idea. Well, the image of Christ up there has his face covered, so I'm going to say the faceless pilgrim. Nope, that was wrong. <laughs> There's no salvation of the Lord for your soul. Fuck you, Father Ernest. Now leave me alone. I have to purify my soul. Can I go back inside? Murmur. Have you purified your soul? 
What is that? An old razor blade stained with blood. Ew! Oh, ugh! Does he cut himself for penance? Not, he doesn't just whip himself? Dear God in heaven, I feel for you. Your light is... <laughs> that cough just totally threw me off. I feel for you. Your light is in my eyes. I will burn them for you. Dear God in heaven, I feel myself in you. Your eyes are in my soul. I will burn it for you. Dear God in heaven, I fear myself in you. Your sword is in my hands. I will burn them for you. Dear God in heaven, I hate myself in you. My blame is in your heart. I will burn myself for you. I know you are there. You didn't hear me? Get out of my room. Despite being blind, he preserves good hearing. I must be more careful when moving. How could I be more careful when moving? Oh, I know. I'll play music, so he surely won't know I'm here. <laughs> okay, maybe the music box gave me away. Okay, maybe, maybe now it's finally time to do what I've been trying to do for like the entire game, which is use the music box in the shower room to spread music throughout the entire place. Maybe? Nope. Apparently not. What are you supposed to do with that? It seems like you're supposed to use it. I don't know. Alright, well, I have a razor blade, so... We're going in here. I'm... Uh, using just the knife, my hands wouldn't have enough strength. Okay. Embed it in the log? Using the wooden stump as a handle, I can use this to cut. Okay, here we go. Cutting tool. Finally, I can go inside of the dorms. Back in time again. And finally, our expert on philosophy, Jeremiah Devitt, shows up. Where were you, my friend? We've been looking for you. Well, as I was saying, tonight is the perfect moment for our next meeting. But I suspect that someone outside our group is secretly surveilling us. Who is it, Anthony? My dear friends, it's Professor Glynn. Do you mean Father Ernest? Certainly, no doubt about it. Therefore, dear colleagues, I have decided to change the venue for tonight's meeting. Have you noticed the lounge behind the small door of the dining room? I have believed convenient to bar- wait, what? I've- something, something convenient to borrow the keys- f key for our necessities. You already know, at 12 o'clock you'll find that door opened and I'll be inside the lounge. That's it, my dearest colleagues. And then there's that, which I believe is a thing that was sent to Devitt. That was the message that was sent to him, right? That Latin saying? I forgot what it means. I'm not sure if he even mentioned what it means. I remember that in this furniture we used to keep some of our personal belongings. Now, it is empty. The walls are in complete disarray. I could probably punch through it if I tried. It does seem to be falling apart. I remember that this is the bed where I used to sleep when I was a student here. A dusty mirror. Could 
probably punch through it if I tried. Would you like to try? No, apparently not. Okay, fair enough. Right. So there's the meeting place, which was where? Dining hall place, 12 o'clock something? I kind of already forgot it. I mean, is there any place in this place that I haven't been to already, though? So, where could I even go? Not entirely sure. Yeah, what exactly am I supposed to do? Mm-hmm. Weird sentence written on the board. I mean, no matter where the meeting was supposed to be, does it even matter? I've been everywhere in this place, unless there's some sort of a secret entrance, but... Did they mention something about a secret entrance and I just didn't pay attention? My ability to retain information is practically non-existent if you haven't noticed that already. Though somehow I've managed to remember the characters' names. But even that is a minor miracle. Alright, if I move, like, slowly, can I... If I move when he moves, could I... sneak up? Maybe? What am I trying to get to, though? Once again, this is just a... Oh, cripe. Damn it. Makes the filters coat in a dense layer of wax. Having almost burnt out, only barely illuminate the room. Even if I could make it to here, what what could I possibly do? Why would I need to sneak? No. Yeah, what up? A... Okay, I got inside of the dorms, but what did that accomplish? There's got to be a reason I had to go back to the dorms. After finding the razor blade, I needed the razor blade to get to the dorms. So I must need to go to the dorms to do something else, but what? They couldn't meet here, they had a meeting place in a different place, but where? Can I replay the dialogue? I mean, I can't. Wait, what? Oh, okay, apparently I can sleep in the in the bed. Right then. Mr. Rabbit was jumping through the forest in a warm spring afternoon. Okay. Something tells me Mr. Rabbit gun die. When going through a bush, Mr. Rabbit ran into Mr. Wolf, Mr. Vulture, and Miss and Mrs. Snake, who were having a heated argument. Mr. Rabbit, 
curious, asked them, Dearest, why are you arguing in this beautiful and cheerful spring afternoon? Mr. Wolf answered politely, What we are trying to decide here is who of us will have the pleasure to eat you up. Mr. Rabbit, really scared, said, But I don't want to be eaten. I want to live. To which Mrs. Snake answered, smiling, That's impossible to happen, Mr. Rabbit, since we all, both you and us, are going to die sooner or later. Don't you think so? Mr. Vulture added, Mrs. Snake is right. We should stick to the issue at hand. It's getting late, and as you see, we do not agree. Do you want to help us to decide, Mr. Rabbit? Who would you suggest as the one to eat you? <laughs> Having the rabbit decide who, who's going to eat it. That's cruel. After thinking about it for a while, Mr. Rabbit came up with an idea and carefully said, I got it. Why not to organize... <laughs> <laughs> some, there's definitely some grammar, some writing mistakes here. It just made, I just read it out, like, read it in my head and it just made me laugh. I'll, I'll try to correct for them to make it into a, a proper sentence. I got it. Why don't we organize a race? The first who arrives to the forest clearing will have the privilege to eat me. No doubt Mr. Wolf can run at high speed, but Mr. Vulture can go flying and avoid any obstacle, and I'm sure that Mrs. Snake knows all the shortcuts within the forest. I guess the competition is balanced. What do you think? What is it that I see in the windows? It looks like there's stuff here. It looks like there's stuff in the windows. But I don't know what it is. It's too dark. And that looks like a person. The three predators agreed that it was fair. So they started the race and they quickly disappeared. Mr. Rabbit, happy to trick them, started running at high speed in the opposite direction of the predators, who, eager to prove their worth, didn't realize the trick. Mr. Rabbit was far away from there, and he finally felt safe, happy and proud of his cunning. But suddenly, there was a loud bang. The earth shook, frightened birds flew, and everything went dark. The end. <laughs> Mr. Rabbit was shot. Oh, hi, rabbits. I think I'm gonna go now. Bye. There's something I kept for myself for a long time. And the thing is that I love you. I have always loved you. Since the first time I saw you. Since the first time I felt your frozen hands. Each time I move away from you, I miss your glassy, empty, dead eyes. I miss your rough hair, your grayish skin, your stench. But our love just can't be. It's an impossible love. The end. No. Not again. How long have I been sleeping? What was all that about? In the nightmare, I found a place. A place in my memories. Did you? And... Where was that place? And also, yeah, what the hell just happened? I, I don't even know. Where, where did I find? 
I found a place in my memories. Let's go see if something's changed, maybe? Hello? Hello? In my disturbing nightmare, I was brought to this spot. I thought it kind of looked like a secret entrance. I guess it was. It's the trap door I saw in my nightmare. From here sprouts a horrible stench. There's something down there. <laughs> Let's go. Holy shit. Did you see it? Did you see it? It was there, just in front of me. He was screaming. Holy crap! The decayed corpse of a young woman. It seems as if she had been devoured by an animal. <laughs> the hell was it? Was it the rabbits? Come to take the revenge? <laughs> he shakes uncontrollably, his body racked with pain, and there's only one way to end his suffering. Morphine? Here you go. It's okay. It's okay. Rest in peace. The stretchers used to carry the corpses here. Who is behind all this? The walls are splattered with dried blood. It's like these people were violently torn apart. Okay, so this is the meeting place. Punctual as always, Devitt. Now all that remains is to introduce our guest. You may come in now, Professor. Father Ernest. Do not worry, my friend. I invited him to join us this evening. The Professor genuinely shares our curiosity, and who better to complete our group than one of the most renowned theologists? Moreover, we mustn't ban those who are willing to explore beyond the veil. The moment we have long awaited has now arrived. Please, all of you, take a seat and we shall begin the procedure. Soon shall the door be open, and then may we finally see what lies beyond. Now I ask that you close your eyes. You will feel a momentary prick as I inject you with the serum. Even after all these years, I have not forgotten your voice. You are the fourth witness. I remember. I remember now what happened. What it is that we saw. The eye of the bird. What happened to us? What is it that we witnessed? You must tell me. You must make me understand what my mind cannot fathom. It was our curiosity that damned us. We opened that which should not be opened. In doing so, we shorn the veil that separated our world from his. In seeking vision, we were ourselves seen by the eye of the bird. The eye of the bird saw us. It remembers us. It looks for us. It calls us from its dark nest, from its abominable lair. All these years I have attempted to return to it, but I have no strength left. These poor, wretched creatures are too fragile. They lack the sight to return. Not one of them has returned. Only us, the four witnesses. Who are the other two? Where are they? They disappeared as you did. I haven't heard from any, from any of them but you. But I was seized by curiosity. It absconded with my faith and deprived me of sanity. Oh Lord, 
Forgive me, for I have sinned. Nothing remains. All that is left is surrender. Surrender to him. Gravely have we sinned, and now our only, our only absolution is to burn. To burn in the flames. <laughs> That's the end of the chapter. <gasps> ah. Holy crap, are they good at creating cliffhangers, huh? Damn. <laughs> okay, well, let me get a good stretch in. That was a long one. The, f the first one was about an hour, but that was about two hours almost. Oh, it looks like they had a bunch of uh, a bunch of contributors do some of the descriptions, I guess. Interesting. That's kind of cool. I like that. Okay, so let me try to wrap up this game. It's um, it's actually quite a. It's surprisingly different from the first one. From the first episode. Yeah. It's surprisingly different. Which is kind of good, kind of in a good way and kind of in a bad way as well. I'm still very much enjoying it. But, um, yeah, let's just delve into it. So, to analyze it for a bit. Compared to the first one, it has a lot... It has a lot more, actually, not a lot more. The, the original one, the first episode, didn't even have any uh, dialogue with other characters. You never got to talk with anyone. It was a very solitary experience. Whereas this one is quite a bit different, where you, because you actually have a bunch of other people to interact with. So now there's a dialogue system and a bunch of people to talk to. So the fact that there's so many people to talk to means that it's not a solitary experience, which really changes it quite a bit. And I like that. I, I like that it's different. It's not just the same formula. It's not just... They didn't just copy the first one. It's not just go to the boarding school and it's abandoned and you try to break in and then you're in an abandoned boarding school or something like that. Which, I, that might have been okay, but... It's not... It wouldn't have necessarily been bad. But I do like the fact that they did something different with it. It really does feel like a very different experience from the first, even though it has the same interface and... You know, you still collect items and use them to solve puzzles and stuff like that, but it just felt very different because it's not solitary and you have to interact with people. So I thought that was, I thought that was interesting and I liked it. Let's see what else. Well, there's one... In terms of what I think could be improved, um, unfortunately, I think that Episode 2 is a very large step back in terms of the puzzle design from the first one. The first one had... It had a good puzzle design, actually. It was quite good. Yeah, the first one had very solid puzzle design. It was never uh, frustrating or really particularly contrived, but this one, oh man. The, the, <laughs> the puzzle design was just, by and large, it was not very good. It was a large step backwards because the puzzles were just so contrived and absurd and just... 
Yeah. I, I mean, this whole uh, episode two, the entirety of episode two just feels very... It feels bigger. I don't I don't know if the actual physical location or the number of rooms is larger it, than the first episode. It might be. But it just feels like there's more stuff. There's more stuff to interact with. And the fact that you can talk to all these different people adds even more points of interaction. And unfortunately, what came with more points of interaction and more things to do it also came more complexity. Which certainly didn't help. Um, but but not just it's not just having a lot of things to interact with that caused the problems. It's just that the puzzles were just really silly. They were so contrived, by and large. Like the whole get the bundle of letters from I can't remember her name. Uh, Mary, I think. Yeah, get the bundle of letters from Mary's bag, and then you're supposed to give them to the guy to convince them convince him that his sister Mary is just lying to him. I. Like, I didn't even know that those letters in her bag were from his wife, because it didn't tell me. You look at the description, and it didn't say anything about it. It just said something like a bundle of letters with some twine wrapped, wrapped around them. And plus, you shouldn't even need them to be able to convince him that she's lying, because you just read the letter. Why couldn't you, be, why couldn't you have just told him, hey, she is lying to you, I just read it. Yes, I read your mail, and I'm kind of a asshole for doing that, but, you know, I read it, and I know what it says, and what she's saying it says is not, is not accurate. I mean, it, yeah, I don't, I don't get that at all, but that it wasn't even the worst example. There, there, there's many more, like the whole uh, teardrop in the Virgin Mary's eye, which, I mean, putting the teardrop there made sense. That was fine. I got that pretty quickly. However, after doing that, I thought that would have solved it right then and there. Put the teardrop in the eye and then she'll notice. The nun will notice and see it as a sign and go off and do something. But no, she didn't notice. So I talked to her and I, wa I wanted to say in the dialogue, Hey, hey, look, it seems like the Virgin Mary is crying. I think that might be a sign. But no, you couldn't. So because she gave me a hint about music, saying the Virgin Mary hears everyone or something like that, something about hearing them, so I played the music box behind her to make her look behind her. Nope. So I tried to play through the pipe thing in the bathroom, because it sound it said it communicates with the rest of the building. Nope. And then it turns out what you're supposed to do is use a piece of mirror to flash at the teardrop on the Virgin Mary, and then, then she sees it. So you're telling me that she didn't see it when she turned around to look at me? to talk to me, and I can't mention it to her in the dialogue, but you have to use a piece of mirror to reflect light on it and then she notices? That's just really silly. And then the whole thing with the using the music box to cheer the one nun up who had lost faith and then, I, I mean, that part made sense, but and then you go out to the window and then you would need to, like, bash the pipe thing so that the water can flow down freely and then use the net on it and then go back to the showers and drain the water out, and then have it get caught in the net. I mean, it's just really contrived. The uh, The first episode was very direct puzzles. There weren't a lot of different steps to them. It was just pretty straightforward, like, use a crowbar on some boards. That makes sense. These were kind of silly. Kind of really silly. And pretty frustrating. They weren't particularly satisfying, and they required me to just use a lot of items on a lot of other items without any use of my brain, really, because I tried to use my brain. I thought, how can I solve this? What is a logical solution to this? And then when I couldn't find it, the only thing that was left to me is just randomly try things on everything. I literally used every single item on my inventory on every single other item in my inventory. In some cases, that big case where I cut out like 20 minutes of me just aimlessly wandering, that's what I did. I was using every item in my inventory on everything else without any sense of purpose or thought. Because I had already tried that, and it failed. And that's just really frustrating. So that's... Yeah, that's the uh, that's the biggest thing... That's the biggest um, place where it went wrong, I think. Is in the puzzle design. It's Surprisingly, it's a big step back from the first one, which I didn't expect. I expected, any, if anything, it would get better. Um, but that's just the puzzle design. In terms of the other stuff, it's... Just as good as it was before, I think. 
potentially even better. Again, I like the fact that they changed it up. There's some new some new things that you get to do. It's a it's a new location with a different feel to it because there's it's occupied by people. And you have to actually talk to people. I like that. It's bigger. It was about twice the length of the first one. There's a lot more detail to it. Which is is nice. Um I see the audio is still excellent. Once again, I really like what they've done with the audio. For example, the very end, where you're hearing yourself getting put into a coffin, and you're hearing the hammers nailed in... <laughs> the hammers. Hearing the nails hammered into it, and you can hear the dirt being put over your coffin. That is creepy, and it's all told through sound. No visuals whatsoever to communicate that until this very end screen right here. It's left up to your imagination, and you know exactly what was happening when you heard that. It's like, oh god, I can imagine it. And it was so effective, and it was just sound. But it was so well done. I'm really impressed with what they've done with sound, because I think sound is one of the... I think sound tends to be under... appreciated or underused in horror games, at least in interesting ways. I mean, a lot of horror games use, like, jump scares and stuff in terms of sound to kind of create horror... And that's easy enough to do, that's, you know, that's pretty common. But in terms of using sound to create more of a terrifying kind of creepy atmosphere, I think sound is often underused, and I'm really happy to see that they're using it a lot here, and using it to such great effect. Everything in the first episode, from uh, the cat to the grandfather clock with the creepy ticking noises and the gramophone, that was very creepy, and then here you had, you had the, the coffin at the end is the standout example of how good the sound design is. Very impressive. And in terms of the story, I'm not really sure. It's... I mean, the uh, the story in the first episode was simple enough. And here in the second episode, it's kind of taking on a whole new... It's kind of going, like... It has a life of its own at this point. It's just turning into some quite large and kind of complicated and very bizarre thing. I'm not even sure what to make of it anymore. Yeah. I'm not sure what to make of it. But nonetheless, even though I don't really understand exactly what's going on other than there's some sort of evil that obviously is infecting people and it's related to this peeking behind the veil. I understand that much. I've got the basics. And I know something very bad has been happening and will probably continue to happen. And I just really like it, even though I don't understand it all that much. Quite yet. Which is natural to not understand it at this point, because obviously there's still many chapters to go. If you understood everything by, like, the middle of the game or whatever, that wouldn't really make any sense. So, I like what they're doing with it. It's a very creepy sort of story. About some sort of ancient evil that's been... Uncovered, or sort of the idea of peering into something that humans were not meant to see. It's very kind of... It makes me think of Cthulhu, like the Cthulhu mythos, a bit. In terms of people seeing things that they shouldn't, and kind of going insane. And I like that very much. And I'm still, I'm still really intrigued to see what happens next. Because I just want to know more about the story, and each episode ends with a very good cliffhanger, so that also even even more increases how much I want to see the next episode. So, I think that's a pretty good sum up. It's It continues to be good, very good in many ways. It does some interesting stuff. Episode 2, unfortunately, took a step back in puzzle design, a quite large one. But despite that, I'm still very much enjoying it. So, I hope everyone has enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon with Chapter 3.